Whenever I'm in the state of Pennsylvania, I like to visit one of my favorite video game stores, Classic Game Junkie. This store is loaded with a whole bunch of classic video games from the past and a bunch of modern games from the current day. But something kind of happened while I was there last time, and although normally I find really cool stuff to take a look at, I found something that was a little confusing. Because I found this. Now. First off, I thought this was a controller. I mean, wouldn't you? Because it technically is. But then when I looked at the end, I noticed something. It had video out, which means that this is actually a self-contained video game system. It's called the 200 Toy. Does it have 200 games in it? What does it do? Let's find out. The Toy 200 steering wheel, like many other knockoff and bootleg video game systems, is basically just an NES or Famicom inside of a little plastic shell. You can't expand the games and you can't change them, but what you can do is play the ones that are built inside, which are no doubt really, really terrible, but before we take a look at them, we have to explore the hardware just a little bit closer. On an original NES or Famicom controller, you have a directional pad, the select button, the start button, and an A and B face button. That's all you really need to play NES or Famicom games, it's not really that complex, but the folks that made this controller, <laughs> well, they went the distance. On the top left and right of the steering wheel, you'll find a B button for brake and an A button for accelerate. And you know what else you'll find? Another A button and another B button, then another A button, then another B button, then a turbo A button, then a turbo B button, and for good measure, another turbo A button and another turbo B button. That's eight buttons more than what you actually needed to play any of these games. I have no idea why they did that, but here they are. And, and another thing that just kind of irritates me just a little bit, the brake button and the accelerate button on the top of the controller that clearly say brake and accelerate, well, they don't actually mean that with every game that you play. Sometimes brake will accelerate, or accelerate will brake, or in many cases, you'll find that they do neither. Instead, they'll jump your car up or they'll shoot things. It was really dumb for them to write brake and accelerate where they did, but they did it anyway, because because they clearly had no idea what games were actually going to be on here. Now you've got a start and select button and a reset button to go back to the main menu because you know this is just a modified NES and Famicom and they needed a reset button to be somewhere on there. But what's really important about this system is that it is a functional steering wheel. Only when I say functional, I really don't mean that. It's got a terrible dead zone. What I mean by that is when you turn the steering wheel left or right, there's a moment in between where it actually doesn't register any turn. And when you get to the point where it actually does register, you've moved so far over to the left or right that it makes games almost impossible to play. It is such a struggle to drive in this system because it is so incredibly unresponsive. And the only way I was actually capable of playing any of the games you're about to see is with a directional pad in the dead center. Oh yeah, you probably thought that was a big button or some emblem showing off the fantastic 200 toy company logo. But no, that's a round shield D-pad that sucks, but it's a little bit better than turning left and right with this stupid steering wheel. But it's really not that great. Look at the formation of my hands here. My thumbs have to be in the dead center to control the D-pad, and because my thumbs are already occupied, I can't select any of the buttons around it because I'd have to take my thumbs off the d-pad which is not very good when you're playing racing games so what you have to do is use your index fingers on the top of the buttons on the steering wheel to kind of weirdly hold everything in place and it hurts after a while it really does well I think you're pretty much caught up with how bad this hardware is now let's get into the games utilizing the cheesiest font they could possibly find this is supercar adventure 11 in 1 that's right, 11 games in one, each one of them most likely a racing game because, well, it is a steering wheel and it'd be pretty awkward if they didn't have them be car games. Let's start off with Formula One Racing. Well, they modified the title screen, but this is clearly just F1 Race off the Famicom. They've moved things around a little bit, but the game seems to operate and play just like the original, only a little worse just because the controls are just so bad. Next up is Formula One Racing 2, and let me guess, yep, yep, there you go, it's just another selection of levels from the exact same game. This is kind of a ripoff because at this point you're actually not getting two games, you're just getting one game that's been hacked into two parts. But look at this, Formula One Racing 3, and just like you would imagine, it's another set of levels from the original game. Now at this point, I think it's fair to say that this isn't 
really 11 and 1, it's more like 9 and 1 since these three games are the exact same game. If you play the first one, you'll eventually get to the levels that you'll find in 2 and 3, but does it really matter? This is a rip-off anyway. The only things that have actually changed here from what I can tell are the strange colorations that they've done to the road and all that stuff, which isn't really worth putting a number at the end, don't you think? Let's take a look at the next game, which is called Highway Battle. And you know what it is, folks? It's not Highway Battle, it's Road Fighter from Konami. I've seen this game on tons of terrible systems, and it's no better here. They've modified it and hacked it and changed it, and now it doesn't even run nearly as good as it did when it was on the original Famicom, and even back then, it really wasn't a good game. But at least, at the very least, on a Famicom, you have a really decent D-pad to play this game. And on here, you're using a steering wheel, which just just begs questions as to why it was designed this way. It is so impossible to drive that you're never going to have a chance unless you use the center D-pad, which also is really bad, so the whole experience overall just crumbles apart and makes you scream. Next up is a game called Speed Rider, and guess what? Speed Rider is actually just Mock Rider from Nintendo, but they had to change the name because, you know, they might get sued or something like that. It really doesn't matter. Again, the control problems are really, really prominent here and the whole thing has been modified ever so slightly now mock rider has i guess horns on his shoulders because that's gonna prevent nintendo from realizing that the rest of the game is theirs originally <sighs> I think one of the things that sucks about Speed Rider the most is that even though you're basically looking at a game that's just ripping everything off from Mock Rider, wouldn't they just rip off everything? For some reason in this game, they basically didn't include the course design mode, which was kind of a cool feature for Mock Rider. I mean, how lazy do you have to be to not rip off everything from a game you're already ripping off? What's the point? You're already stealing, why not just steal the whole thing? It's like going up to a successful burger joint and taking one of their hamburgers and then trying to rip it off yourself but when you do rip it off you forgot to throw in the buns yeah i guess it's still a hamburger patty on some lettuce and a bunch of messy ketchup but at the end of the day it's not a complete package this is what they did here they didn't make a complete burger next up is burning rubber although when you get to the title screen it says burning rubber 3 but let's just forget about that for now this isn't burning rubber what this is is motor race usa otherwise known in japan as zippy race this game was bad back when it came out, and it's still bad. If you're just gonna go out and steal games from manufacturers from the past, why not just rip off good games? You know what I mean? There are plenty of good Famicom and NES racing games, but for some reason, they keep going for the bad ones. I would hesitate to call this game a racing game, because you just move so super slow. It's more like you're driving on an electric scooter that's been broken down and can only go three miles per hour. This game makes no sense in the context of racing games, and like I said earlier, they could have ripped off anyone, and they decided to go with this one. They should be embarrassed. Next up on the chopping block is Leaping Drive, and what really confuses me about this one is that, well, this is just Bump and Jump, and even though Bump and Jump originally was a good game, they seem to modify it to be not a good game. All the characters and all the vehicles have been modified from their original and hacked to look a very little bit different. And when I mean little bit different, I mean they're little. They're actually smaller than their original sprites from the original game. And to make up for that, they now vibrate left and right really quick to make it seem like they're actually bigger than they are, I guess? I don't know why they did this. All the hit detection is completely off, and the game doesn't play as good as it originally did. What they could have done here to make the game fun is just left it alone. But instead, they had to get on inside and mess it up because they just had to. Congratulations. Next up is Road Battle, where they stole the logo and the DeLorean from Back to the Future. They thought I might not notice, but I did. Now this game here is actually a game called City Connection. Now the funny thing about City Connection is, well, I've never really liked it. And it doesn't get any better here, because the control scheme absolutely sucks. All of the vehicle-based games we've shown you so far take place from a third-person perspective or a top-down perspective. Basically, you can turn left and right with the steering wheel, and it makes sense. With this game, though, you're turning left and right on a 2D plane looking from the side. It's really confusing, very difficult, and absolutely not recommended. It's the controller that makes this game even worse than it originally was. It's shocking, it's hard, and boy do I not like it. But before we go on to check out the next game, take a look at this. Here's what the main menu music sounds like for Road Battle when you first turn it on. <laughs> 
Sounds like a tuba falling down the stairs, right? Well, here's what happens when you hold down the D-pad in any one direction. The music kind of sounds better now, right? Isn't that weird? We have no idea why this was happening, but let's be honest, it's a lot more fun doing this than playing any of the games built into the system. Next up is Great Racing, and it's, yep, look, that's just F1 Race again. All right, let's try Great Racing 2. Okay, again, another F1 Race, and Great Racing 3, yep, of course, another F1 Race. That means that this actually isn't 11 and 1, it's 6 and 1. Six terrible games on a terrible controller presented to you in the worst possible way imaginable. If at any point in your travels you happen to see one of these on a store shelf and you think to yourself, boy, I should pick that up and have a real fun racing experience, well don't. Look somewhere else. You know, whenever I get these systems, there's just a little bit of hope that I have that it might be something really cool, but it never really goes that way, does it? Whenever I look at one of these, it ends up being one of the worst consoles ever, and unfortunately, that's what this is. But maybe in the future, if 200 Toy is watching, and I really doubt that they are, maybe try and license the games, work a little bit more on the controls, and, I don't know, remove 50% of the buttons on here, because you really didn't need that many. And maybe if you did that, you would actually have something unique and fun and worth playing. But until that happens, this is going to be a member of the Terrible Video Game Club.